Uh, the final piece of evidence is the way in KJO4. Uh, I've been working on that for seven years and recently uh, Chris Locke is helping me with that and we released this book, some of you already know. Uh, this book has or was produced specifically for young people because we have found that we cannot change some people, probably we have to start with the younger generation. So this one is created for young students. It's constructed in a way that, uh, that uh, they can do scientific tests or some kind of uh, proofs or tests, very simple ones, to know or get information about this type of chip. Uh, is the research in a real UFO? You find them in Spanish, in English, in Amazon. If you want a German version, you have to contact the people in Switzerland. Pigo.org and there is a German version of that book that was translated by uh, Christian Perman. Okay, I have eleven experiments so since uh, knowing how the sphere reflection works and well, many things about that. I'm not going to give you too much detail about that, probably it's too heavy here, but you can just look at it in detail. But basically, this UFO looks very funny. Even for Billy, it looks funny. Billy called it the cake UFO. The UFO looks like a cake. It looks like a wedding cake. So that's why I say the wedding cake UFO. And you say, what? The UFO is supposed to be a piece, not that thing. Okay, so why that funny appearance? Like this one. These are very nice photographs with little, little, little small details. So, for some people say that these are Christmas tree balls in uh, the base of a trash can lid with other things like the base of a pot plant, uh, some uh, supports of shell, shell support, the one that you put in a little thing and put in it, is shell support. Very common household items using uh, In another contact report, in the <coughs> 254, but I explain a little more details about that. This flying device was developed or designed in the 1920s to be used on air environment. If you look at videos of Billy Mega UFOs, the one that looks like a disc, they're moving all the time. If you look at videos of the one in UFO, especially one that is in a tree, it's completely static. It's not moving. Why? Because it's designed for our environment. So probably all the spheres and all of that interact with our magnetic field in a way that is very stable. It's not moving up and down all the time. But at the end of the 20s, uh, they tried to send that information by telepathic impulse to German scientists in order to construct that type of spaceships that would help the development of the Earth. So trying to stimulate the imagination of those scientists, scientists, but they found at the time that those scientists were getting or shifting towards uh, different purposes, so they tried to use it for wars as a military equipment. So immediately they stopped sending those impulses and they started sending false impulses to, uh, uh, to confuse those scientists so they were not able to construct it anymore. That's the origin of the way in KU4 is back from the 1920s. But for some reason, most of those items look like similar household items. Ah, it's helping the skeptic barrier. Well, let's look at the detail. Uh, this detail. It's a detail. You see a little blue lens here, red lens. Should be another lens here, but I don't know with which color it is. Little crystals, one here. Blue, green, red. Some little details like this one. This is a plate with a X mark that if this is a model, it has to be two millimeters wide. So it's so small. So if you do that, do that, it has to use a microscopic tools. It's tools to do little details because it's so small. Very curious. It looks like the support of the shells. The one that you have on a, you, you put the, with your drill, you make a hole, you put a round piece there, 
and then the other part that goes there and you support your child. But it's a little bit different, has a wider head, it's not exactly the same. The upper part is one. The upper part, it's okay. the upper part uh, of, the, of the upper platform is very similar to a pot uh, plant base. The, the plant that puts in the bottom uh, to receive the water, that exists of water, is very similar. Uh, there's one, but the water is being shown as a evidence that may be needed uh, with that. It uh, has a different proportion of the uh, width against the height. And this one has some stars, the other one has other stars, but this one has five rows of stars, but the plant base is only four rows of stars. So it's very similar, but it's not the same. <coughs> Why? Because somebody constructed. Uh, it's not very clear to me if the player did it on purpose. Uh, in the contact report, they seem to be surprised about that. They have found 25 items in the UFO that are very similar to known object objects. Yes, I'm, not, I'm not sure if somebody just look at the photograph of Billy Mayer, just try to build those items, or the player did it on purpose. Uh, reading the contact report looks like the player didn't do it, somebody else did, did it. But there's no clear uh, in, uh, explanation why. But they look very similar. Okay, so how do we know that this object is a little model that is close to the camera, to the camera, or is a big object that is far away? Uh, the way to do it is like uh, using the reflection of the spheres. I'm going to give you an example. Let's suppose that you have a frame. And you take a picture of the frame. How do you know if the frame is small and it's here in the picture, or it's a big one that is back there? You don't know. But if the frame has a mirror here, when you take a picture, you see your face in the mirror, right? You see your face, and your face is big. You say, oh, the mirror is closed, because you're looking at the reflection. But if the mirror is in that wall, far away, you don't see your face, you see your whole body. So it's a smaller. So it gives you an idea of if it's close or if it's far away. Using the same logic, we were looking the reflections of the sphere. I'm gonna give you like this one. The reflection of the spheres that are very similar to show the reflection of the carrier's house where Billy was located when he was taking the pictures. I'm going to show you a map. This is the map of the Billy Mayer property. Uh, this is the main house of Billy Mayer. Uh, this is the Carrier's house. Actually, it has some rooms there. And on the top, I think there is a mini room where they made the peace uh, meditation up there. Uh, and the UFO was here in the red area. This is another view from the hill that is up there, from there. It's a wide view of the place uh, a few years after the way the UFO was photographed. So you see there are less trees here and here. This is a more recent picture. This is an uh, older one. And the UFO was in that area. We are making an estimation that it was moving in that area. This is the Carrier's house. This is Billy Mayer's house. And Billy was here in that place. So it was close to the wall, below the ceiling, with his camera, waiting in the same place, he didn't move. We're looking at the orientation in the different photographs, we know that he didn't move. He stayed in the same place, and we know that with an error of 30 centimeters, the location of the camera, more than 30 centimeters zero. And he was there taking the photograph of the flying chip in front of him. So that's the other photograph he took of that very interior Looking at the reflection, we have now, we know that if this is a model that is close to him, the reflection should be showing a big carrier's house reflection. This is a simulation with a computer. So the carrier's house should, could, should be much bigger. Christian Ferrer do some tests with some spheres there, and he does exactly the same. And when the sphere is at one meter distance, 
we see the caresa was so big in the image that it's not what the Billy Mayer picture shows. It's not that size. And also, if you look at the tail, there is a little brown figure here that might be Billy Mayer taking the pictures. All the investigation that we are doing for, for many, in many tests and in many ways, we have found that this way KUFO flying in his backyard, in front yard, was around three and a half meters, so it's the size of a small car. In that ship could uh, hold one pilot, could be three people there, very, very, very crowded, just in case of emergency, but one person inside that one. So it's three and a half uh, meters that one. Okay, let's continue. That one is an interesting one, it's a UFO uh, in uh, front of a tree. This is a Norway spruce, a uh, very common tree in that area of Switzerland. This one uh, shows two UFOs in the tree. That one, some skeptics say, oh, that's very simple. They uh, believe they uh, pulled a bonsai, a little tree, with the model, and he took a picture from the distance. Another skeptic say, okay, that's also very clear. It's a false perspective. The model is very close and the tree is behind. Okay, so this one explanation for that, another explanation for that. But if you look at the tail, it's the same tree at the same moment. Billy was walking over there. There are five photographs that you see the sequence, Billy getting closer, closer and closer. And you notice that the way it came uh, cast a shadow on the tree and he adults. So it shows us that the tree and the wedding cage for are one close to another one. And you see more detailed image of that tree. You notice it's a real tree with real leaves. It's an always close and the wedding cage for is very close to it. So you see some reflection, that reflections here from the tree, clear reflection coming from the surrounding grass. Uh, the shadow on the branches. Some of the branches are receiving the sunlight, but all is done. So this is a wedding cage that is very close to the tree. That tree is seven meters tall, so that wedding cage UFO is also three and a half meters. Uh, later on, two hours later, when he was walking, uh, he's in this place. I found this place in a Google Earth Maps. I found that tower and found more or less the location of this photograph. You see it behind some tree, but it's not very clear to much. But if you increase the contrast, you see that the way your point is behind another, uh, another tree similar to the other one, the doorway is close. You notice the red crystals here, the way your foot there. Here you may wonder how can Billy be walking on countryside in Switzerland, taking pictures of the UFOs and nobody noticing. Because this one is two hours late, should be a neighbor, somebody there, they're looking at all, oh, what that guy is doing with that camera. Oh, okay. there's a strange flying machine there. So why did they didn't notice it? This uh, spaceship has a clocking device, so they hide themselves from curious people. Uh, Billy Mayer explained it in the Japanese documentary. He explained that they have some kind of in, uh, a sphere around and they make a hole in that sphere and that hole is pointing to his head of his camera because he is the only one to see it. So we could be there and nobody would see it. Only Billy Mayer's camera can see it. If he walk to another location, so that hole is moving all the way directly to his camera. So that's the way that he could be walking and taking picture of that UFO, walking in countryside uh, without any people saying, oh, what is that? What is there? The way came UFO uh, at night, there are other pictures that it looks golden instead of silver. Some people said he sprayed it with golden painting or something like that, or because of the use of these different strange lighting, lights, it has that color. So they say they put it on a table, probably in a black table, or put some kind of uh, cover on that table that is black, and he took a picture 
uh, with little models of cars and little trees, things like that. Okay, this photograph shows the way in the UFO at night. This is a tree that is not in good focus because the camera is taking a picture with low light, so the diaphragm is very open. So what we call the depth of uh, how you call that? Depth of field. Depth of field. Depth of field is very short, so can be only focus the way in the UFO, but not the tree that is closer than the car, or the car that is a little bit blurry. Uh, here is a telemetric disc that's moving while the picture took place. It's a small little device that they use. So it's here shining. Billy Mayer was walking in uh, two minutes later. He was closer. This one could be one of the leaves of the trees, or it is below the tree. Again, the same UFO and the Mercedes Benz vehicle there. Uh, looking at the size of the vehicle and the UFO, it looks to be a 7 meters away in the UFO. So now we have a bigger one. So there's it two in two sizes. That's a very interesting picture, uh, taken uh, by Billy, uh, very early in the morning, 2.48 a.m. He was uh, on board on another way in UFO, flying in the middle of nowhere in the Swiss the countryside, and he took a picture of that. He laid the one on the table, and he took a picture of that. But, recently we have discovered that increasing the contacts and the brightness. We discovered that it's something below that UFO. First of all, there's a pink halo around it. We don't know what it is. There is a kind of footpath, or road, a pole, probably a fence pole, that normally they measure one meter high. So compare this size with that size, we know that this is a seven meters you away in KUFO. But there's something that you may notice, not sure if you notice this, look at it here on the pole. You see something here? You see that shadow? Why that shadow is there? Another question is, why if the Wayne UFO looks so bright, very bright, why the surrounding environment that is just below the UFO is not clear to us? Why is so dark? If this is made with a model, and if you look at the detail of the sphere, you notice there are two sorts of light, one on the right and one on the left. Like he was taking a picture of the model, and he has a studio light here, Another one here, one on the right and one on the left, taking a picture of that. If there are two lights, why there is only one shadow here? This is a mystery. The only explanation that we have, and it is uh, also related to what Billy Mayer said, really says uh, this UFO is that color because it is emitting light, instead of reflecting light from external source, it emits light, so kind of radiation. And we have found the reflection that is probably true, because the reflection cannot explain external light. The only way to explain it is that some internal light there. And probably that way, when KJFO was using a talking device, so it's not radiating any light to the ground, only from to the camera, so Billy could took a picture, but here it's very dark, because no light is going down there. So you could be walking here at that time and you may notice nothing. No UFO, no spaceship, nothing. Because they were using the clocking device. That's the only explanation of that. That single child cannot be explained by the moral theory or it's very difficult to know or explain by the UFO. The only explanation is that it's using a clocking device. And what is lying, this is a very distant street light, a uh, little point that produces that single shadow. That's the only explanation. Uh, to tell you, uh, I noticed that before in the first uh, wedding KUFO investigation report that I produced and released, I was going to publish this photograph. I didn't notice the pole that is here. You see the pole is here. This is a photograph of when there is still a book. Uh, it's been there for a long time, but we only noticed 
three years ago, two years ago, three years ago, and we didn't notice that the pole. And we also didn't notice that red, red type. I was going to put it in the investigation report on the wedding well KUFO, but James Derdorf uh, asked me not to do it because uh, the evidence that I have about the wedding well coffin I was not very solid at that time. Right now it is. We have more clues, so we can put it more about the winter of open night. That line, vertical lines, is related to the format of the image. It's a JPEG with low resolution that has that pattern of bright vertical lights, lines. But that red halo is also in the photograph. You can go any place in the internet, find a photograph, and do some image processing, and you will find the same halo and the same color. Or having that kind of image, Oops. doing that same thing with the image that are available right now in internet. And all photograph probably is the same. Okay, more information about the well, KBO4, which is the last piece of uh, evidence that I'm using here. But you can use all the pieces of information to demonstrate that duality between showing fake information and showing real information at the same time. You can find it in the my detailed investigation. It's a 70 something pages report in Spanish and in English. Here is the address. You can download it and read it. It's a little bit technical. It has some uh, calculation. You need to know a little bit about geometry, trigonometry, and things like that. But it's not very complex in reality. Oh, you can also find the book in the one that we call for John Scientists with. Uh, uh, some tests that they can do is on experiments, like for example constructing a, a stereoscope to see images in 3D from the wedding cage UFO. That's very interesting because the wedding cage UFO because it has a different sphere. Each sphere is, is working like a single eye looking something, in the reflection you see something. And because there are different uh, spheres, you can use two of them to produce a stereoscopic image. So you see in 3D the shadows of the trees. That's very interesting and one of the tests that we did. Also image processing uh, and so on. But there's a lot of experiments on that. This is for young people very curious to working on that. Now the question is why this or why do we call controversy? By the way, this photograph with this tree, there are several photographs here with the, the UFO moving around the tree. This tree was also disappeared by the Pleiadian. The Pleiadian took it away. Why did they do that? Because of the wedding KUFO, excuse me, because of the war wedding UFO controversy. So they did it on purpose. So my conclusion are the following. They do it because we have to be skeptical with an open mind. That's one of my conclusions. Why to be skeptical? Because we cannot trust everything that is in internet. Especially in internet they show a conspiracy. Oh, it's a conspiracy. Great, it should be real. Let, let's see it. Oh, all the scientists on Earth are lying to you. The Earth is flat. It's not round. They've been lying to you for centuries. So you are living under the dome. You are controlled in that single space. And the sun is like a, a spotlight moving around you, illuminating, giving you heat, and then disappearing. Uh, the flat earth, by the way, looks like a soci sociological or social experiment by an intelligence group. I imagine some people from an intelligence group saying, okay, let's imagine how can we convince the people of something that is totally absurd, but they think that is true. Let's imagine the world uh, conspiracy or more difficult to believe that could be available. What is something that everybody knows that is true now, that we can convince them that is not true? Oh, that the air is not flat. Everybody knows that the air is not flat. Okay, let's convince them that the air is flat. So they put in internet a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of demonstrations that show that the air is flat. And they should look at the, the statistics on the website, the YouTube, the YouTube videos, Facebook uh, group. They know what percentage of the population could be so, excuse me, stupid to believe that. So that's the one way to know so, sociological how percentage of the population could be manipulated at this point of time. This is my personal interpretation of that. Because it's totally crazy thinking that there is plan.
Well, I will be in South America when I see the sun going down, it's not moving around. I've been in South America where the sun, instead of moving in one direction, is moving in the other direction. That cannot be explained in a flat air model. Totally absurd. Okay, so what they want with the, the worldwide UFO uh, controversy is that they need us to think by ourselves. We have to start thinking that something that the uh, mainstream media is showing us is not true. Something that some people are telling us for a long time is maybe it's not true. But we have also to be open mind to see the truth. Because we'll be skeptical that we trust anything. Uh, that's the other extreme. We don't have to be totally skeptical that say no, anything of that is true. Or we have we have to be skeptical just to filter the information that we receive, investigate it, and understand it by ourselves. It's telling us that you are responsible for your own knowledge. In the past, we were eating what was survival. Right now, we have a big buffet of many different things that you pack what, what you need. You pick what you need and you eat what you need. So you have to be very selective on the information you are receiving. That's the shift of the society that is happening right now. We have to be skeptical and we have to be open-minded. So we have to understand that maybe there are a lot of lies there, but we cannot believe that everything is a lie. So we have to use our own internal judgment. So you don't have to trust on skeptics. You don't have to trust on your co investigators. Don't trust me. And my investigation, I am not saying you have to trust me because I said so. I put in the information for you to do your own investigation, do your own testing, and reach your own conclusion. I am just saying something that I have found. Probably you found something different. Go ahead and investigate it and find something different. So this is the shape of society that we have to think and be responsible for our own development. Also, the worldwide UFO con controversy uh, is required because it's allowed people that are not ready to accept a new reality to have an exit door. Some people do not understand why it is a wrong. They have some religious ideas. You find in the internet, I have been receiving notes from some people saying, oh, it is our demons, our devils, and they try to convince humanity on different things. Don't pay attention to that. The, the Lord is the only one that is true. Things like that. Or some people say, no, there is flat, there is not extraterrestrial planets, all of that is not real. Uh, other people say, okay, there's uh, ET, uh, extraterrestrial life. UFOs are, are correct, yeah, the uh, Roswell case and other are correct. All the ET are the evil one, the great one, and what Billy Bayer said is not true. So there is a lot of different flavors of skepticism. So that one is constructed for the people that are not ready to accept have an exit door. Why? Because the people's psyche would be seriously affected. I told you that some, once in a while some people called me because somebody saw a UFO and they want some explanation from my side. I have a, an experience in my country, in Colombia, in the northern part of Colombia. Uh, I was working in a company in that part of Colombia, in the northern part, in an area that is very close to a desert. Uh, there was a lieutenant of the police that was very confused. He was not sleeping very well. He was somehow getting crazy, feeling very bad, and probably disconnecting from reality. And somebody told me he saw a UFO the other night, and he don't understand that. Why don't you go and talk with him? So I went and talked with him and explained him that it was very common in that area. He was not the only one to saw a UFO. Uh, there was also a kid from the school that saw them flying on the sky, so that what they saw was very clear. <coughs> so his psyche was affected, but as soon as he understood that was very common, he was starting to calm down, calm down, knowing that he was not getting crazy. What we saw was real, understanding why they are here, explaining him so many things that I already know, things that I've been explaining here. And he was feeling very well. After that, he could sleep very well, and he was feeling relief. 
He told me, oh, you are, you are like a priest that I knew some time ago that helped me just to understand many things. Okay. This topic could make some people get crazy. Right now, people in there somehow is crazy, but there will be more people getting crazy. So that was really that way. Right now, it's not that complicated because we know there are, uh, life, uh, there are all planets in our system. So we will find out that there are life from Mars, microscopic life. Uh, there are the interesting uh, discovery by the Nazca moments, if you have seen them. That's something that is opening our mind to a new reality. Billy Mayer UFO case or Billy Mayer case is opening also our mind to another reality. So this is a transformation that is happening. In the past there was only one small UFO. Right now you see, for example, in Mexico City, a demonstration with 100 bright objects flying in the sky. What? Why is happening that? Are these uh, UFOs or what is this? So something is happening, they, they, they will be more common and more common. So this is a transition of our transformation. It was planned as a part of a transition. You're supposed to go to a jungle and you find there are some uh, primitive uh, people living in that jungle. You cannot go there and impact their culture immediately. You have to first probably dress like them, like one of them, walking among them and start teaching them something to allow that culture to adapt to the to know that there's somebody else living out there. So that's what the ATs are doing with us. So it has a good purpose. The purpose of that barrier is that it allows us to have a very soft transition. So that skeptic barrier will be destroyed in the future. We will be seeing that it's falling down. Right now it's started falling down because of that the evidence that's showing that video media case is real. But we will see in the future that we can see our world. So we are moving from the present to the future. By looking at the media case and all the information they have on the spiritual teachings and showing what could happen with the if we do not something different, we don't do something different, is telling us that we have to do something by ourselves. The main message in the major case is uh, we have to have our own responsibility. Don't trust what everybody tells give it to you or somebody else tell you. Uh, in the future, there will be no gurus, no masters, no leaders. Everyone should be his own leader because we will have a direct connection with the creation. So we will know what is true and what it is not. In the future, we feel that connection that are between human beings. We are all connected. All that I do is affecting you. All that you is doing is affecting me. If we know that connection, we cannot harm anybody else. So there will be no wars in the future. There will be no wars because I cannot damage one part of myself. If, for example, my right hand is, uh, is very angry about my left hand because the other day I was putting a, a, a nail on the wall and hit it with a, a hammer. So that hand is very upset about that hand and it started pushing the other one. So one part of myself is hitting myself. That sounds crazy, right? But this is what is happening in the humanity. One part of the humanity is damaging another part of the humanity. So we go, have to go in a conscious level that we understand that connection between human beings. Right now we feel some isolation. We feel that I am isolated, that I am individual human being. We don't feel that connection. If we, in the future world we will feel in that connection, but right now we don't. So that sense of solitude uh, gives us to gather everything. Oh, this is my wife, these are my sons, this is my house, this is my car, this is my country, this is my planet. So that's part of that solitude that we feel. If we are connecting with everything, everybody will be my brother, my sister. <coughs> I cannot understand why my brother is on the street. I will be helping him. Doesn't matter that I have to solve his problem, but I will help him just to solve it by himself. So in the new world, we're going to have some responsibility. It's going to be a planet that will be not as crowded as the one that we have right now. 
Uh, at this point, we have overpopulation that is destroying the planet Earth. So in the future, we're going to handle in a more responsible way. I don't believe the world is going to end, but I think if we don't do anything smart, what is going to happen is going to look like the end of the world. All the catastrophes that are going to happen if we don't do anything. And the only way to start with doing that is starting with ourselves doing an inner transformation. All that the it is the UFO show us while we are looking up there to start is that we have to look it inside here. So one way to look up there and say, oh, there's light up there. It's just an invitation to look inside yourself and feel like connection between you and the creation. That's the purpose of all of that. What is more important is the transformation that do you do in yourself. Okay? And if any one of us transform ourselves, we are creating a transformation in the world. That's something that is going to happen. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have the energy to make some questions? Yes. Okay. You said you knew about four cases with extraterrestrials, Billy Meyer, and then what about the other three? Okay. Uh, four cases. One of them is somebody that Billy Meyer thinks is not a real contactee. It's Sixto Paz. Sixto Paz is a Peruvian, Peruvian guy that was living in Lima and in a place called, in a desert very close to Lima, he witnesses some UFOs and he says as he has been talking with those eating humans. Uh, I know him because he was in my house. I invite him. But actually the place where I live, I invite him and I say, okay, oh, he can stay in my home. I was talking with him face to face. That's one of them. Billy Mayer says that this is not a real contact, that it's totally absurd, that there is a light life in Ganymede, one of the moons of Jupiter. And that's true, yeah. there is no light in Ganymede. There is a, a space station, uh, Sixto Pass says that. Uh, Sixto Pass is a case that uh, showed that he has some religious background, so he has some interpretation based on his own knowledge, and that's okay. I see, okay, he, he made some religious interpretation of the UFOs because he's what he has done. Well, to me, this is a real case. Uh, another case is somebody called Luis Roberto Rodriguez, who was a countryman in Colombia that he was uh, taking care of cattle, milky, milky them, extracting the milk. Uh, he was a very poor guy. I mean, very poor means that he didn't have the wetness of most of the people. He lived in a poor house with a family just working on, it, uh, on, the, on the countryside. One day he started to hear in some voices saying, prepare for something important that is going to happen to you. And he was really scared about that. Some of his friends, oh, that's the devil, you have to go away from here. Some, something bad is going to happen. He was taking a board in a spaceship and he was dealing with human beings from the stars that are different from the Pleiadian. The Pleiadian has beer, like me, but I'm not a Pleiadian, you know. Uh, but that, that one has a long hair going to the shoulder. They have a pink halo around, a violet halo, and the clear face, uh, a bit different than the Pleiadian. Uh, and the other case, the fourth one, is somebody called James Thompson. He's somebody in the United States and he just had one single contact with them. He was driving uh, with his car, with his girlfriend, um, just for some reason he went out of the, of the road mm -hmm. and he ended up below a spaceship and a small beautiful day. Uh, he said that is the most beautiful day that I have seen, was a white one, who was talking with him. And he was using some kind of technology projecting his body in 3D close to him. And with that technology he saw an uh, image of himself in a hologram and in that image he was uh, putting out the muscles, the bones, and he was examining his body with a very high-tech device. Instead of that crazy story that the ETs just uh, <coughs> captured the people and cut them and do 
things, uh, medical examination. They don't have to do that. They have the technology just to scan yourself without caution. And th that they did it uh, for making feel comfortable, uh, the lady, the IT lady, projected herself there. So she said, oh, I'm here. And she was making comparison between her body and the body of, of, of uh, James Thompson. To me, this is a real case. Happened just once, but to me, it's a honest person. Uh, I've, been, I've been working in coaching, I am a coach. Uh, so for me, it's very easy to look at the body language, uh, the tone of the voice, and I understand something else in the conversation. So I can easily find somebody's lying to me because of the body language, okay? The way they do, the way they move their hands, or so to me that he's saying the truth, six to pass is saying the truth, the group is saying the truth, and Billy Major is saying the truth. There are four contact lists that are real. Okay? Any other question? Go ahead. Okay, so if Patana said that they were flying the ships on purpose, like yeah. a pendulum, right? Doesn't that make you distrust almost everything that they, if they, assuming they're real, and assuming that they're real and they are, and they play tricks, right? To, to manipulate us now to have this controversy. Yeah. Doesn't that make you question other things that they do? Yeah. Or is that the whole point? Yeah. Yeah. They did it, I didn't know that. But they also know that somebody was looking that in detail and finding hiding clues show that this is real. You see the videos, uh, actually the video is no longer available. You are going to ask the video to Billy? He said, this kid doesn't have it. Somebody very close to him, I'm not gonna say who, said it to a German person. He doesn't have it. All that we have is all recordings from the video itself. One going by the Japanese team that they recorded in a production on the screen, and another one that has been saying that is a gathering in different places. So we know the video is not manipulated because we have different sources. Uh, the one from the Japanese has something interesting that they put a time counter. So the, the speed of the, uh, the film is not manipulated. They just say, oh, I'm moving slowly in one part or moving faster in another part, just to simulate the changes on the pendulum movement. No, this is a real one. So, okay. Yes, the information is put in there in a way that they destroy everything that they are doing. But they did it on purpose. They didn't want us to trust on them. But they want to do it just cre create a worldwide UFO controversy. They are not doing the, they didn't do the demonstration to say, oh, they exist. No. They put it in that way to say, you have to think by yourself. You have to find the clues by yourself. If you want to find the, the truth, to be a bit careful to look behind what is obvious. And this is a teaching that they are giving to us. Okay.